Hi all, Alicia Tubbs here with Evangelize Georgia. Evangelize Georgia is the name of my evangelism group. The opinions and thoughts in this video are all my own. They do not represent the thoughts, opinions, or doctrine of the people in my group. Today's t-shirt of the day is Every Knee Will Bow, Lord Jesus. And that is from Philippians. This is one of my favorite t-shirts. I get lots of comments on this shirt. It is bold for Jesus, but we are told to be bold for the gospel. And that's in Romans 1.16, because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. I do not sell my t-shirts online right now. I just don't have the capacity for that. If you would like me to come and do a presentation at your church on how the people in your congregation can evangelize, I will bring my t-shirt collection with me. I will also bring copies of my book, which most of my material comes from. This is 21 Days of Evangelism. You can get it for free on my website, evangelizegeorgia.org, or you can buy it for $7.77 on Amazon. It is salty. It is bold. It exposes the false evangelism model that has been taught especially here in America for the past several decades and has actually been destructive to what the Great Commission tells us to do. The Great Commission simply tells us to go and proclaim the gospel to everyone, to make disciples, to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. What many churches teach is to do the exact opposite, to have fellowship first with people, to build relationships, and then try to get around to telling them the gospel. And this is a corruption of God's model. If Satan can get you to focus on just one or two relationships in your life, and those are the only people with whom you share the gospel, then he has done his job at crippling you and keeping you from going and telling everyone. Because the Bible says to go and tell every creature. It does not tell us to go and build relationships with a handful of people and then, after years and years of relationship building and foundation building, share the gospel with them. And to be clear, relationship building is fellowship. And fellowship is a wonderful thing. It's from God. But the Bible instructs us to have our closest, most intimate fellowship with believers, not to be cozying up and having our deep fellowship with unbelievers with the purposes of them later sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Now, you may have fallen into this trap as I did for years years. My husband and I were hosting dinner parties and doing all kinds of things, trying to get unbelievers into our home. We're trying to get them to church so that we could eventually share the gospel with them. And you may be doing this right now in your own life, and it may have worked out for you in a couple of cases. People may have received the gospel. Praise Jesus, because God promises his word does not return void. So God will still save people wherever the gospel is proclaimed, even if you have been duped into following the false evangelism that most of us have been duped into. But you will not reap the benefit as a Christian of being able to fully go and do the Great Commission as the Bible commands us, because you'll just be so hung up on relationship building and on that kind of model that you just won't get around to doing evangelism or ministry the way that Jesus modeled it the way that Paul modeled it, the way that even the Old Testament prophets modeled it, the way that any servant of God really models ministry. So this book is all about exposing that and encouraging you to go boldly with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Before I get into the main topic today, I did want to share just a few things because it's been a while since I've recorded a video. Today is Saturday, August 10th, 2024. We are fast approaching the 9th of Av which many watchmen do believe will be the great and terrible day of the Lord, and the day prior to that possibly being the catching up of the church, the rapture. Nobody knows the day or hour, but if you are following what's going on in Israel and the Middle East, which I do hope you are, it does look like we will be going home soon, saints. Soon and very soon. So if you're, if you're not ready for Jesus, if you're not really sure where you stand with him, or if you have rejected him, I highly encourage you to reconsider and put your trust in Jesus right now. He is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords. Every knee will bow to him. So whether you trust him 
or you decide to go your own way and think that you can make it to heaven on your own or through some false religion or by praying to some false god or to some saints, you will still have to stand before God in judgment and your knee will still bow to Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is God come in the flesh. He died on the cross to take away your sin and he was resurrected so that he can resurrect you one day. When you trust in Jesus Christ, your sins are paid for. Your soul is clean. When you die, you go straight to heaven. Praise God. Hallelujah. That is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it gets even better. Jesus did not just die. He was also resurrected three days later. So Jesus died on a cross, was buried, and rose on the third day. And because he lives and he is resurrected, he lives in a resurrected body, he will resurrect anyone who belongs to him at the resurrection. So at the resurrection or the rapture, Jesus himself descends from heaven with a shout. And he is God. In the Bible, it's clear that Jesus and the Father are one. There's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the three in one that's called the Trinity. And Jesus was present at creation. He has no beginning and no end. He is eternal, just like the Father. He is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and Omega. And the Bible tells us that all things were created through him. All things were created through Jesus Christ. So you were created through Jesus Christ. And because Jesus created you, he has the power to recreate you. And that is what he will do at the resurrection for anyone who is in Christ. Jesus himself is going to descend and with a shout, he's going to wake the dead. And he's going to resurrect the dead and they get immortal bodies. And if you are alive... At the time of the rapture, the dead will go up first, and you will get your immortal body, and we will all be caught up in the clouds to be with the Lord forever. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can't wait. But you must accept Jesus and Jesus Christ alone as your Savior. You must turn your back on any false religion, any superstition. You must turn your back on the idea that Jesus will just forgive your sins when you get to heaven. You must turn your back on the idea that your good works will get you into heaven or that your kindness will get you into heaven. It's great to be kind. The Bible tells us to be kind. But kindness cannot pay for sin. There is one thing that God will accept for payment of sin, and that is the perfect blood of his son, Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the perfect Passover lamb who paid for all sin once and for all. I have a wristband here from a dear sister in the Lord. Uh, she owns a shop near me and she sells these and it says to tell us die which in Greek is it is finished this is Jesus's last words on the cross it is finished his job on earth was through he came to be the Passover lamb and his death on the cross didn't just cover up sin it completely paid for our sin took away our sin uh, so to tell us die it is finished and then this here is the I got this on Amazon this is the Shema in Hebrew so anyway, you must receive the blood of Jesus Christ as payment for your sin. And I encourage you to do that right where you are. Just cry out to God. Just say, God, I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. I need Jesus. Please forgive me of my sin. Jesus, come and make your home with me. Holy Spirit, seal me for the day of resurrection. You don't have to pray those exact words, but just cry out to God. Call on Jesus. All who call on Jesus will be saved. So you must believe with your heart that he paid for your sins and was resurrected. And you must confess Jesus with your mouth. So don't keep Jesus to yourself. If you receive Jesus, go and tell others how they can have God's free gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. And that's a gift from God. Your salvation, your entrance into heaven is a gift. It's the free gift of God. You get to live eternally with God in paradise. That's called eternal life because you live eternally with God. You get to escape the fires of hell, which we are all destined for without Jesus. And that is the free gift of God. So if you receive that free gift, which lasts forever and is the best gift you will ever, 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 ever receive because it's from God, right? You're going to want to tell others how they can receive that gift, right? Because if they don't receive that gift, they will end up in hell. And that's just what the Bible tells us. I don't like talking about hell. God wishes that none would go to hell, but the reality is that we all deserve hell. And God is perfectly just when he sends people there for rejecting the blood of his son. 
because he made a way for us to not go there. And that way was so costly to him, it cost him his son, his son who was the very likeness of him, who was one with him. Imagine someone that you're so close to, that you're, that you're one with the person, and you give that person up as a sacrifice to save other people, right? And then those other people reject that person, that, that person who is one with you, right? Imagine how God feels when people reject Jesus. So I encourage you to really just think about that. Receive Jesus as your Savior if you haven't. I'm going to share with you all a memory verse that our family is memorizing this week because I want everyone who's watching this to commit to memorizing one memory verse per week. If you're reading your Bible and um, you have a highlighter or pencil or pen and you don't mind writing in your Bible, I highly suggest that when you come across just one verse or two verses that you want to memorize, that you mark them or maybe put a post-it by them if you don't want to write in your Bible. And then just pick one of those verses and just memorize it. I cannot emphasize how great of a discipline this is. And it's very easy. Uh, it seems hard at first. You might think, how am I going to memorize this? But I encourage you just start small. Just take small verses and sometimes even just learning the same memory verses that your children are learning is a great way to learn. That's how I learn. And oftentimes my children will learn the verse much faster than I do. But don't compare yourself to anyone else. Just take it slow. Just memorize little pieces. And if you want, you can even memorize one sentence or one verse of a longer passage. And then over time, maybe over the course of 10 weeks or so, you have you know, a big chunk of that passage memorized and you will always have that. So if you want to join myself and my family this week, we are memorizing Romans 8, 28. This here is from my children's homeschool curriculum. They use the NIV translation. That is not my favorite translation. Um, I really like the NASB 1995. I also really appreciate the KJV. But anyway, I'm just memorizing this version because it's what my children are memorizing. And the verse goes, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So just memorize that this week. You can memorize it from whatever translation you prefer. And as you memorize it, things are going to stick out. Like that's a very familiar verse. And I have actually memorized parts of it before. But even as many times as I have seen this verse... There are phrases that when I was memorizing it really struck me, like I had never meditated on those. I began to understand what it means to really chew the cud, right? Or to really just chew on and eat God's word and just really spend time just meditating on these different phrases. The one phrase that really stuck out to me from this verse was, who have been called according to his purpose. So many people are familiar with the first part of this verse, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Right? We all understand that. But this added phrase, who have been called according to his purpose, adds a whole other layer of meaning. Because there's lots of people who claim to love God. And they might think that all things are working together for their good because they love God. But it's not just loving God. It's also you have to be called according to his purpose. And are you doing his purpose? Are you doing his work? I hope this helps someone out there. I love you all so much.